destroy the enemy infantry? Is it to mask your movement? Is it uh, whatever the fuck? Is it to eliminate your movement? Um, or is it to eliminate armors over infantry or vice versa? That and that's uh, something you need to find define as a command. Otherwise, uh, your FO is just gonna make up his own fucking uh, job and do and do stuff his own way. That's not always desirable. Uh, in fires, you also need to give out restrictions, priorities of fires. As I mentioned before, you need to say uh, get in, you give him restrictions like you're only engaging within these uh, grid squares, or you uh, you're only engaging in front of us, or you're only engaging behind us, or whatever. Um, and priorities of fires. What's most important? Do you want him to? Uh, do you want them to engage tanks? Do you want them to engage vehicles or infantry? Uh, whatever buildings. That's uh, where you put in as a platoon leader. You say, "This is my priorities. I want this destroyed first." Um, and you need to mention uh, how much fire support resources you have. What type? Uh, and what munitions you actually have, so what, uh, is it mortars, artillery, or whatever, and how much do you have. So uh, elements calling for fire can take that into account as well, that, oh wait, if we only have 12 rounds for a 60mm mortar, we might not want to use that on a single machine gun. We might want to use that for a more concentrated enemy. Uh, same thing for air support, if we only have uh, limited air assets, might not, uh, people might want to know what kind of uh, platforms and munitions we have, and um, and how it should be prioritized. So uh, a squad leader can say, "Okay, I know armor is prioritized first. Fuck, there's a tank. Uh, fucking commander need a need, need the J tag to call in a tank on these grids, or call in an anti tank strike on these grids." So that's why you want to tell your people this: what what the purpose of the fire is, and uh, priorities, restrictions, and so forth. Next thing in. Um, I hope you guys are not dozing off. Next thing is uh, the task to maneuver units. That's uh, that's pre pretty straightforward. It's just saying, uh, okay, so first squad, when we do, um, we will, uh, you will be doing this, this, and this while we maneuver. Second squad, you'll be doing this, 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 and this. Third squad, fourth squad, two IC, uh, medic, so forth. And um, when you're doing an assault, you want to designate a, a support units, a base of fire units that uh, will support your actions and you need to give them tasks as well like uh, okay so weapons uh, your main target is uh, light, uh, the enemy's light vehicles I expect them to be around here so that's your main target and there's uh, two squads your base of fire with weapons and I want you to engage uh, infantry prioritize uh, RPGs and machine guns that's uh, examples of tasks to maneuver and support units Finally, in execution, you want to give out uh, what's called coordinating instructions, and that's uh, that's uh, mostly something that's used for avoiding uh, fratricide. That means avoiding uh, killing friendlies, and that's either by actually marking friendly forces by tropes or I or chem lights or IR chem lights or whatever. Um, can be a bit risky to use depending on the enemy situation, but if you're fucking fighting Taliban or whatever, then it might make sense to click an uh, IR strobes on every every single man you have because then you can at least tell, okay, this guy's friendly because he's have, he has a stro uh, he has a strobe or cam light on him, so I can uh, so I can see his shoulder light up, but the enemy can't. Um, also, want to go into risk risk reduction measures. That is uh, stuff like. Uh, have it, uh, what's we're gonna go over uh, next first day, which is face lines, basically a line where you will not allow people to cross before you're ready as a platoon leader. That could be uh, a line you have in front of uh, a target area that you're calling an artillery on ahead of you. So only when that and those last rounds splash down, then can you move across. That's a risk reducing measure, or um, or. Um, Measures to avoid enemy outflanking you by having by by doing bounding overwatch or whatever. Those risk risk reducing measures that you want to put into your coordinating instructions if you have any specifics. Uh, you might have some critical information requirements. You can uh, put that in as well. Like um, engineers, I need to know once you, when you're ready to uh, to blow up the objective or. Uh, uh, Anything imaginable, anything that you need to know, 
you need to tell people that you need to know this so so they can tell you as quickly as possible rules of engagement of course uh usually pretty straightforward and almost all commanders can uh, can just say weapons yellow and people know okay don't engage unless engaged or uh, only engage uh, uniformed soldiers or only engage armed uh, combatants firing actively at you or whatever but you need to you need to say this what can you engage and what can you engage it with because you could easily end up with an fo just say getting told okay you can only engage uh, Armed combatants. Okay, I see an armed combatant in that town. I'll fucking call Artie on it. Nah, that, that wasn't the intent. So you need to say, uh, not only who can you engage, but how can you engage them. So you want to say to the FO, you can't get, you can't engage unless you're cleared by me or whatever. Okay. Um. Next thing, air defense status. You want to put in uh, how, how the again how the enemy air defense is uh, set up and how your own air defenses are set up, so people know that. So uh, if you have a uh, anti-air uh, mo uh, unit moving with you, anti-air contingency, then you need to tell your people that you have uh, a fucking Humvee Avenger uh, riding behind you or some, uh, something like that. So they and they know that instead of just uh, running at the side of the first uh, aircraft flying o over their heads. Um, look, I'm just gonna go over this pretty quickly. Mission abort criteria pretty straight uh, straightforward. If we lose uh, two thirds of our unit, we will abort. If we uh, if we do not achieve the first objective, we will abort. Uh, uh, if we lose two helicopters, we will abort, etc., etc. That's just. Uh, that's something that you no know, armor players do because they just wait for the whole unit to die. But in real life, you would want to salvage as much as possible, and therefore you give some mission abort criteria, along with contingency plans. And uh, that could both be, uh, yeah, that could be anything. If the enemy, uh, if the enemy hits our convoy with IEDs, how are we, how are we going to react to those IEDs? Are we going to try and push through and leave uh, wounded behind? Are we going to stop right in our tracks and? Hopefully, I haven't driven into a complete ambush. Are we gonna fire manically around us? Whatever. That's contingency planning. Um, sometimes you even want to uh, give out locations of uh, op uh, Operation Rendezvous uh, Point and uh, patrol bases, and uh, basically where they are. Um, and dangers and formations or uh, an order of march. Once you have, all, if you have uh, at least some of this stuff in your execution plan, if you have the overall thing, things like uh, tell uh, tell your people what your intent is, what the concept of your operation is, how the fires are going to be used, tasks to maneuver and support units, and uh, some coordinating instructions, then you have a pretty decent execution. If you just remember th these main points and can make this work, then you can uh, then you can expect a good outcome. Fourth point: sustainment, not uh, used that much in game, but worth mentioning. Um, that's your support concept. Again, you wanna. Some, most people like me, I like to have my two IC handle uh, sustainment, and he will formulate a support concept. How we're gonna, what kind of support up have we given, and how we're gonna employ it. That includes uh, how we're gonna re uh, restock munitions, how we're gonna get fueled. Um, how we're going to use our medical supplies, how we're going to get more, where are the forward air airports if we have any, and how we're going to use those. Uh, do we get airdrops? How do we use them? Sling loads, etc. Medical evacuation. Do we get the um, medevac? What's uh, and what's the plan? And what is the plan to deal with those casualties? Uh, casualty evacuation and casualty collection points. That's the two I see who figures out how to uh, how to handle casualties. But you might want to formulate this for your two I see, saying, okay. Uh, if we get casualties, I don't want to bother with them. Just leave them on the ground to die. Or uh, I want to save every single man. Okay, so do I see knows needs to make a detailed casualty plan if that's the case. So on. So pretty straightforward, um, but still a major point, especially if you have uh, missions with forced uh, what's it called, forced casvac, where you have actually have to casvac people, uh, and uh, if you have. Um, or if you have have uh, chip missions or respawn, how are you gonna deal with those casualties coming back to you? 
det. Lad os find uh, command, uh, command and control. Uh, you want to assign a succession of command first off. And that's just uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, if I die to as he takes over, he dies uh, uh, first squad, second squad, first squad, fourth squad. Le uh, leaders take over. That, that could be a order, uh, succession of command. Um, signals, uh, you want to do this as well. You want to give, um, you want to assign some nets, like uh, channels uh, one through six. And then you want to say what units are going to be on, on uh, channel one and what call, uh, what call signs they will be giving and what their net will be called. And then you'll just uh, go on th uh, through there. Once that's done, uh, you sometimes want to give out some far near recognition signals, especially useful for TVTs like uh, you could all agree that the uh, shift uh, numpad 9, that is uh, that's a friendly and a far recognition signal and a near recognition signal could be a uh, running password or a number combo. It could be like uh, the uh, number is 13, so if you say 9, then people need to uh, to say 4, because 9 plus 4 equals 13. Or, uh, or a um, running password that could be a uh, that could be like a alpha alpha, and you know the correct uh, answer to that is super super, for instance. Uh, that could be a million combination there. And something pe most people, lastly, something people will get, forget in TVTs that would be extremely useful if people knew how to do it, would be a compromise contingency. And that's basically, if the enemy somehow gets on our, uh, on our radio net, how are we going to deal with that? Because we can't just keep talking with him listening to us, or uh, homing in on us. So uh, the way we can deal with it is, uh, for instance, say, compromise com contingency 1 on radio, that means everyone... Uh, that's uh, that would be code word for um, could be change channels up uh, five channels, so fi uh, five frequencies up. That would be a compromise contingency, and you could have uh, as many of those as you can write uh, as you can remember, basically. So the platoon leader should just be able to call out compromise con contingency one. will be uh, uh, doing radio checks in one mic, then changing channels. Everyone change channels. The platoon leader times it, and if the one mic he start uh, start saying all call signs, uh, all call signs is six radio check. Okay, that's about uh, the last of my novel here. One final thing I'm just going to leave you with here is uh, this uh, this acronym called OACOG that is um, used for terrain analysis. And um, OACOG consists of observation and fields of fire, avenues of approach, key terrain, obstacles, cover, and concealment. Um, so that's just when you, whenever you're giving a, a given an objective and so forth, and you want to do your mission analysis, you want to look at OCOG, and you want to remember these points. You want to see, okay, from where can I observe uh, uh, key terrain? Where can I, uh, where can I put out some effective fields of fire? Uh, where and what good avenues are, of approach are there for me? And what good avenues approach of approach does the enemy have? And how can I block the enemy from using these uh, key terrain? What do I actually need to seize in order to, uh, in order to gain my objective? Um, cover where is good? Uh, where do we have good cover? Where does the enemy have good cover? And how can I neutralize his cover? And concealment, cover and concealment is not the same thing. Cover is uh, like in a building where the enemy can't uh, fire directly at you with um, with small caliber weapons uh, and kill you. Where concealment is just where can uh, where you can hide. And once you have uh, all these factors in. Then you have your terrain analysis. Um, I was thinking about going into um, details using this map here, but I'm uh, but I'm sure you guys will actually understand this pretty easily. Otherwise, we can uh, do a practical one. So, um, otherwise, this actually conclu concludes uh, the first session. Are there any questions? You were actually thinking of doing an exercise where you looked at a map like this and talked about fields of fire and, and stuff like that. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Wow. Is am I the only one that um, that would benefit from something like that? No, I'd be down. Me yeah. too. I'd, I'd really like that guy. Yeah. If you find the map. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, this is a map from Pakistan, and it's overwatching the town of uh, Kamarud. 
And uh, imagine you, you're given a task of uh, attacking Gamma Road, and in this case, you would have to come in from uh, from the south because you're not uh, given information about the northern part of town. Then, uh, first off, we're going to find out where's uh, good observation points on on this town. And I might want to add that what we want to secure here is the crossroads in the town. We want to be able to gain those. Um, those MSR for future uh, for future actions against the enemy. Well, I would say it's, it's essentially surrounded by mountains. So um, there's a good mountain to the southeast, but it's probably going to be it's going to be hard to control the intersection from there because it's a couple hundred meters away and there's a lot of buildings in between. But it looks like there's a good hill on the west side, hill 2321. Yeah. First off, we're just going to go observation uh, points. Where can we uh, observe the town? And the enemy's movement, but yeah, that's uh, 23, uh, um, 23, 53, uh, yeah. should be able to observe some of Gamrod and at least the uh, the road uh, to the south of Gamrod. And uh, yeah, the hill to the southeast, uh, 22, Hold 80. Yeah. Yeah. I put I put the uh, I uploaded the um, image to Scribbler, so. Oh yeah, sweet. Good idea. Okay, so guys, uh, go ahead and click your slipper. This is actually useful. Fuck. There we go. Okay, we'll just uh, try and enhance this a little. Okay. So uh, as we agree on four, we have uh, we had some uh, some point. We had this hill here that we could use in as an OP, and we might have this hill here. Fuck my eyes. X is all fucking off. <laughs> okay, well, you, anyway. You, you realize you can use other tools there, like, like